Hey everybody, in this video I want to talk about something that I've used personally for understanding the human form and it's something that I've kind of boiled down to, into a technique called the toucan technique and what this basically is is looking at the shoulder blades and the pelvis as cylinders and those are going to be connected by a simplified spine and I've made a video about this many years ago on a now unupdated channel but uh, I'm coming back to this with a little bit more insight in the hopes that will help you out so basically what this is is just a if you will imagine a curved wire and this wire connects the pelvis to the um, shoulder blades and if you want to see how this all fills out, we can kind of create a very simplified version of our rib cage. And we have our abdominal area. And then we can add elements like feet and arms, etc. So, what this technique does is it allows us to go ahead and really analyze a form and create action poses that are fairly dynamic. So let's take a look and see this technique up close. Uh, and then we'll look at some references and try to apply the toucan technique to those references. So we can imagine that the cylinder here can twist. And I'm going to draw the cylinder in such a way that it looks like it's actually facing towards us. And I'll put the pelvic cylinder facing towards our left. And this line right here is the line of action. It's a very simplified version of a person's spine. And the uh, cylinders here are simply the appendages by where you can go ahead and add arms like so and feet and legs, all that good stuff. And the feet connect to the caps of the uh, cylinders that represent the pelvis, and the upper arms connect to the caps that are represented by the cylinders that are denoted for shoulders. And you can see here we have the rib cage, we have the abdominal area, and we've got a simplified form. Uh, so um, we can apply this to drawing females as well, keeping in mind that uh, the shoulder blade to pelvis ratio, we're going to just make the pelvis a little bit wider. We'll add a little bit of a tilt and draw the rib cage. Add a little bit more of a pronounced curve. And then we can add arms and we can add legs it always helps to draw through the form and I'll just keep the arms and the hands very simplified right so that's the idea so the two cylinders can twist and rotate. And where this technique really comes in handy is if we're trying to analyze a reference photo. So this is actually taken from a, um, an artist photographer named uh, Opal Eye. Uh, that's his username. And you should check out his um, awesome photos. I'm just going to use this particular photo here. And I will also put a link to Opal Eye's work on the description below. And in this case, if we're analyzing this photo, where this toucan technique is really helpful is it allows us to create a starting point. So I'm going to just say, all right, this cap right here represents the insertion point for the upper arm. And we have to be able to draw that cylinder kind of moving away from the viewer. It's at a slight angle, and I'm going to exaggerate that a little bit. And then we also have the pelvis, and if we look at where the feet are, we have a cap that looks something like that. And if we 
look at the curvature of the spine, we can see the curvature of the spine is um, denoted as follows. So why don't we go ahead and draw that in? So this gives me some landmarks that I can work with when I'm drawing uh, with using a reference. And from this point, I can say, all right, well, here's the chest. And I can now denote the arms. And this first study is just me looking at the reference and trying to get some insight into what's going on with the reference. We see the shoulder blade up here and we have the head kind of tilted down. And this particular pose, we don't really see too much of the arm that's further away from us, but we do see kind of like where it kind of sticks out. And this isn't a great silhouette, so you want to think about clarity in your silhouette, but I'm just going to use this as a method of analysis. And then we've got our feet. Like so. And what I would do with this particular reference here is this is my starting point. And now what I'll do is I'll draw my two cans. And you can see that there is a twist on that pelvis. But this time what I'm going to do is I want to create a stronger silhouette. So after I go ahead and draw the chest area, I'm going to move this arm a little bit further out. I've got the back and I'll move the arm that's further away from us, I'll move that out. Now that's changing the reference ever so slightly, but it's giving me a stronger silhouette. And I'll just move dude's head like that. And so we've got hands, And then we can draw the feet. And with the feet, since they're the, the, the pose for the legs and the feet look fairly dynamic, I like that. I'm just going to go ahead and keep that. Right. So that's one way that I can extract a more dynamic pose. So this is my analysis. This is my exaggeration. And now I've got a framework that I can use to draw this character. Um, let's look at another example here. And this example is from a different angle. And this is by Jan Allegre. And I will post a link to Jan's uh, work on the description below. So in this particular case, we can see there's a slight angle on the shoulder blades. And then we have the pelvis over here. So here's how I'm going to look at that. I'll say, all right, well, since I can see where the shoulder blade actually inserts to the upper arm, that's what that's going to look like. And then I've got a curvature to the pelvis. And the pelvis is going to be not as much of an angle, but we are going to see more of where the foot connects on his right, and so we can draw the rib cage, and then we can draw the connection points here. We can see the head is lower in the frame, and then we have the upper arm, and then we can use some foreshortening to go ahead and draw the lower arm, and then we can draw the hands. And then we have another cylinder here. Let me just lengthen that a little bit more. I'm going to try to mimic that as best as I can. I realize that I'm kind of moving his arm out. That's fine. All right, so now we've got the lower leg. And this cylinder is going to taper out towards the viewer. And then we have foot. 
other leg is going to be over here. And I'm taking a little bit of liberties with, with the pose just to improve clarity. I'm almost doing this instinctively uh, just because I always try to think about having a strong silhouette. So it's not exactly like a reference. And here are the trucks for the wheels. Blah, 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 blah. Right? And if I wanted to push that pose out even more, I can. So that's the tip. The tip here is the toucan technique can be very useful in helping you analyze a pose. It gives you a starting point by identifying the tilt on the shoulders as well as the pelvis and then also the curvature of the spine and from there you can attach your arms and your legs. I hope you found this tip to be useful. It's a short and quick one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.